So we all assumed Threadripper was dead. Well, still kind of is, but still kind of isn't. What's your minimum specification? Well, shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per dollar than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe-backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techdeppotato. Today, AMD is finally announcing the launch of Zen 3 Threadripper Pro. This isn't regular Threadripper, this is Threadripper Pro. For whatever reason, we seem to think that AMD has kind of binned regular Threadripper. So if you've got that 3990X 64-core chip, it kind of looks like you're not going to get an upgrade. But Threadripper Pro seems to be where all the action is happening right now for AMD on this product line. And so we're getting the introduction of Threadripper 5000 Pro, or Threadripper Pro 5000 WX series, happening today up to 64 cores, Zen 3, DDR4, HL's DDR4 3200, basically the same regular Threadripper Pro that you got before, but with extra Zen 3 cores. So let's just start with the CPUs that are coming out. Whereas AMD had four SKUs with Threadripper Pro 3000, we're going to five SKUs now with Threadripper Pro 5000. At the top, we've still got the 64 core uh, Threadripper Pro 5995WX, 64 cores, 128 threads, base frequency stays the same at 2.7 GHz compared to the previous generation, turbo frequency goes up another 200 MHz, so now we're going up to 4.5 GHz, all within that sort of 280 watt boundary that we um, know this platform to operate at. Going one step below, we have the 32 core version, the 5975WX, again, Similar in terms of power, in terms of core count, in terms of base frequency, and turbo gets a small uplift to 4.5 gigahertz as well. Next, we have the brand new member of the family, the 24 core processor. We asked why there wasn't a 24 core processor last time with Threadripper Pro uh, 3000 series. Uh, AMD just kind of just left it in the air, didn't really want to say much. However, this time we have it, and apparently there's good demand for it. And again, 280 watts, 4.5 gigahertz. Then we have the 16 core and the 12 core version, 5955WX, 5945WX. Basically everything from Threadripper 3000 gets upgraded to Zen 3, plus that 24 core part comes in there. As of right now, as of when I'm recording this, AMD hasn't announced prices. The price of that 64-core Threadripper Pro 3995WX when it was launched was $5490. That's $5,490. We expect this one to be more around $6,000 because it's the upgrade to Zen 3. But we'll probably get the exact pricing when AMD launches this stuff today. So as always, these companies love their comparison slides. We've got Threadripper Pro 5000 compared against Intel's Ice Lake-based Xeon W3300 series. Now this is based off their Ice Lake Xeon uh, scalable server processor line. So while that goes up to 40 cores, the uh, Xeon W version goes up to 38, uh, whereas AMD, like say, they go up to 64. And then AMD has more frequency, more cache, more PCIe lanes. But the key thing with Threadripper Pro is that it has all the professional feature sets that AMD applies to Epic, also applies to Threadripper Pro. So on the pro feature side, aside from having eight memory channels, aside from supporting two terabytes of DDR4 3200 ECC memory, uh, we also go to the uh, security, manageability, sustainability. This is all about having the extra features required to monitor security and upgrade security like Dash, but also it's a commitment to their customers here that they will support 18, is it 18 months of planned software stability and 24 months of planned availability for a stable enterprise. This usually means OS images and that sort of thing. The point here is that AMD sees these platforms like they see their server processor platforms and builds in long life cycle support for key customers. By key customers here, I'm talking about the system integrators like Lenovo and Dell and HP and everybody else who decides to build systems on this. The first system 
to come out with these chips is going to be the Lenovo ThinkStation P620. Again, if you remember the Threadripper Pro 3000 launch, Lenovo had kind of that six-month exclusive before everybody else got the CPUs. Now, this time around, it's a little bit weird. So AMD and Lenovo have collaborated again as part of this launch to be you know, the primary product of this launch. And in our briefing, AMD said that other partners will be able to get the CPUs around about Q3 or at least for sale in Q3, which means that Lenovo still sounds like it's got a three three month exclusive on this family. And if I go back to when I reviewed the product, I reviewed the Lenovo ThinkStation P620 actually six months after the Threadripper 3000 Pro was launched. However, this time around, I'm hearing from system integrators that they're starting to get these CPUs in already. Um, so we may actually see that sort of three month exclusive that kind of AMD spoke about in our, in our press briefing. It might not be that long. It depends on when other system integrators get their systems ready to ship out. I already know that, uh, Asus on their WRX 80 motherboard already have beta BIOSes available for their customers. Exactly when those goes out to everybody else will depend on when they, they can get that finalized. But I'm getting the feeling that this launch around, it will become a lot quicker uh, to actually getting these chips onto the market. Now, to clarify, these chips do not have stacked vCache. We've seen stacked vCache coming up with the Ryzen uh, Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. That's an extra 64 megabytes of L3 on top of 32 megabytes of L3 per chiplet. Then we've also heard about announcements of Milan X, which is AMD's Epic platform going from 256 meg L3 cache to 768 meg of L3 cache. These Threadripper Pro chips do not have vCache, so they're still at 256 megabytes. I will say one other thing here, just because I've pulled up the table. Um, if we want to find out really what Milan X brings to the table, I think Threadripper Pro 5000 is going to be a great comparison there. Both Milan X we expect to be 280 watts and Threadripper Pro 5000 are 280 watts. Both have the Zen 3 cores. Um, they both have uh, eight channels of DDR4 3200, um, both the same amount of PCIe lanes. What they're going to differ on is basically whether the power is going to the extra cache or whether they're going to the cores for frequency. So if we look at the best Threadripper Pro 5000 chip, um, which I've actually got up in my system here, base frequency of 2.7 gigahertz versus a base frequency that we expect for Epic based on leaks already at 2.2 gigahertz. But then a the turbo is 4.5 versus 3.5. I've actually put in the uh, Milan Epic system here in this table because we can see the change from 225 watts to 280 watts isn't moving the needle that much in terms of core frequencies. So we're seeing, what, an extra 55 watts for that cache. And now we can either decide whether we want to put that towards extra cache or more frequency on the cores. This is what Threader Pro and Milan X will bring to the table. And that's probably why, in both cases, they're going to be more expensive than the straightforward 64-core single-socket Epic that's available. I have had a lot of questions, or I've seen a lot of questions based on the leaks around this, about whether Threadripper Pro 5000 actually needs to exist. What does it bring to the market that n nothing else does, especially when we've got Zen 4 around the corner, Genoa is going to be announced later this year, uh, and even Milan X is, as AMD's Dan McNamara has said, is due for launch later this month. The reason why these exist is because the system integrators that deal with this stuff, especially the more medium sized, they're getting so much demand for these processors. I mean, they were getting the demand for these processors this time last year. We expected these processors to be launched somewhere around Computex, somewhere around end of June last year. And it's now, what, six, nine months later? But they're actually in the process of building systems for their customers who want 64 core chips, who want Threadripper Pro, not uh, epic, uh, not regular Threadripper. They want the 64 core chips and system integrators can't get hold of them. So there's a high demand for this product in those sort of circles, uh, like, uh, three rendering VFX. I've actually got a system here that I'm testing that's still based on the old Threadripper Pro 3000 series. Uh, this is going to get an upgrade to the Threadripper Pro 5000 the minute this company is able to get chips in stock because they've got customers who already want them. 
in terms of expected performance for these chips, as you might imagine, the same thing that applied from Zen 2 to Zen 3 on the consumer platform also applies here in the Threadripper Pro, Pro platform. So we're talking about an average of 19% increase in single core performance and extrapolate that over 64 cores. In our briefing, AMD didn't do any generational on generational comparisons, Threadripper Pro 3000 versus Threadripper Pro 5000. However, they were keen to compare AMD to Intel, whether that's against dual socket 8280s back the uh, the previous Cascade Lake platform, or whether it's against the newer Ice Lake Xeon W platform that only goes up to 38 cores. As you might imagine, first party benchmarks put AMD in the best light. Um, we're going to have to see if we're able to get a chip in for testing. I've already reached out to Lenovo, though I've reached out a couple of times now and I've had zero response. That may be because I don't work at an Antec anymore um, or who knows. I asked AMD and they said reach out to Lenovo. So whatever way I'm able to get hold of this chip to test for you guys, I'm going to see what strings I can pull to at least get one in, If uh, even if that's not the 64 core. Let's see. My final comment here on this launch is I've been waiting for these processors to come to market, whether it's Threadripper or Threadripper Pro based on Zen 3 cores, whether you call that Genesis Peak or Chagall or Chagall Pro. I honestly thought these were going to be launched back last year, Computex June timeframe, and we're now, like I said, six, nine months later. It's, I don't think it's late, later than we expected, simply because that's how long it took to validate. I'm of the opinion that it's just because AMD has had so much demand for its Epic Milan processors and Milan X now that rather than support an entire platform based around Threadripper and Threadripper Pro, they just wanted to get out as many Epics as they could, supply those customers, because that's where the bigger profit margins are. Threadripper Pro does have good margins, but your additional overhead for supporting that platform is a bit more than regular. So it'll be interesting to see where the demand is going forward, whether we're actually going to see another regeneration of Threadripper or Threadripper Pro. Personally, from my point of view, if I was to put money on it, I would say that the Threadripper non-pro platform is probably dead. We probably won't get a Zen 3 version. We probably won't get a Zen 4 version. We probably won't get a Zen 5 version. Threadripper Pro, on the other hand, might have some longevity. Because of the customers in this space, like I said, video effects artists, we've also got science, compute, oil and gas, your traditional sort of HPC workloads, the sort of customers who want these sorts of systems that I was alluding to here. They will want it. AMD has to decide whether there's a big enough market for it. Right now, Intel's play in this space is a pro play. It's not a high-end desktop play. And I'm struggling to see a lot of those Intel Pro systems in the market or anybody talking about them. So this market is AMD's if it wants it, but it has to put in the extra effort. And maybe at a time when they're seeing really high demand, it's not necessarily a market that they have to go after, but they could go after. But then again, <laughs> there are a few things in AMD's product stack we say that about all the time. But stay tuned for that re review and thanks for watching.